This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a crime, sci-fi, and thriller film called Anon. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. As Detective Sal Friedland walks in the city, profiles of the strangers he passes by appear in his vision. His vision is also littered with advertisements, information on cars and buildings he comes across with, and translation on foreign languages he overhears. When passing by a selection of luxury watches, the advertisement gives him an illusion of one of the watches around his wrist. However, one woman he sees is labeled as unknown, piquing his curiosity. Sal arrives at the police station, where he interviews an insurance broker whose son is missing. Using their technology, Sal instantly finds the last recording from his son when the young man stepped off the building to his death. The father mourns upon seeing his son's final moments. Later, Sal interrogates a socialite who's missing a precious diamond bracelet. She accuses her maid of stealing it, but upon checking the maid's visual recording, the bracelet was already gone when she cleaned the bathroom. When the woman leaves, another detective questions why Sal didn't show her the recording of the maid stealing the bracelet a minute before the recording showed. Sal knows the maid stole the bracelet to pay her rent, but he was annoyed at the socialite, so he didn't disclose it. Afterward, a lawyer defends his client who shot a man in the alley, claiming that it was self-defense. When Sal looks into both the defendant's and the victim's recording, he sees that the client pulled out a gun before the victim even reached for his coat. The recording reveals that the victim was only taking a Bible from his coat, but the lawyer insists that his client couldn't have known that he was reaching for a weapon. However, Sal points out that the defendant's judgment was impaired due to having a few drinks an hour before the incident. Sal gets called into a crime scene with Detective Charles Gaddis. The victim, James Cray, was shot in his apartment, but Sal finds that James's record is blocked. Charles grants him access to the confidential record, and Sal sees the victim coming home to his apartment. As he was reading a book, James's visitors switched to his killer's point of view. The killer hacked into James's eyes before ending him. The building's meta trail also shows that James was alone in his apartment at the time of his death. Charles reveals that there was a similar case back in July, when the victim saw his killer's point of view. The previous case suggested that a woman was the last to see the victim, but there's no record of her. Sal recounts spotting the woman who appeared as unknown. He sends Charles his recording of the woman to investigate her. That evening, Sal spends intimate time with his girlfriend, but she notices that he's distracted. Frustrated, she gets off the bed and demands him to show her what he was watching, or else she's leaving him. Sal tells her that he can't show it, so she storms off. Off. Alone, Sal tries to pull up the recording of the unknown woman, but it's been deleted. The next day, Sal reviews James's last recording. The technology contractor, Lester, reports that the recording was edited. Charles uncovered that James was recently cleared of an insider trading charge. Before his death, they also hear a faint doorbell ringing, masked by the sound of music in the background. They deduce that James hired a hacker who helped him clear his insider trading charge, Jordan Neese. The victim of the previous case also had edits of his recording. He had an addiction problem and deleted evidence of his latest relapse to save his job. Sal shares that the unknown woman that he passed by, who matches the description of the woman who last visited Nice, was deleted from his recording. He suspects that someone hacked him and deleted it. Charlie's copy of the recording was also deleted. During their break, Sal shares that even people who were on the street with him when he saw the woman had their records deleted too. They deduce that the woman is using an algorithm that automatically erases any trace of her. With no name or face, they have nothing to use to find her. That evening, Sal spends the night drinking and smoking while re-watching his memories of his son. He then calls his ex-wife, Kristen, and mournfully reminds her that tomorrow would have been their son's 10th birthday. Kristen advises him to move on. Afterward, Sal is called into a new crime scene where two women were shot after their visions were also hijacked with their killer's point of view. The officer sends Sal a clip of his interview with the victim's housekeeper, who recounts that the woman had a female visitor who had brown hair. Suddenly, they hear something from the house, assuming the assailant is still inside. Sal and the officer pull out their guns to investigate, however the officer gets shot immediately. Sal searches the house and hears someone leaving. He heads out into a nearby subway, where he spots the suspect. During the chase, his view of the stairs is altered, causing him to fall. Sal gets up and checks the subway train, looking at each passenger inside. Suddenly, the incoming train knocks him back, and the train that he was looking at was an illusion. 
The following day, the team reviews the victim's last moments. Charles identifies one of the victims as the daughter of a known Christian senator who's up for re-election. The women recently had their recordings altered to erase their relationship. Based on all the victims, they deduce that the suspect had been taking clients to erase so-called victimless crimes. She personally meets her client and gets paid in cash to avoid leaving a trail. Sal shares his recording of last night's chase, stressing that he saw illusions despite them not being on his record anymore. To catch the hacker, Sal suggests hiring her. Sal goes undercover as a stockbroker with a brand new profile. He commits to the act for a month to record enough to override his true identity. Once he has enough recording, he hires a high-class escort. After their evening, he posts on the same bulletin board used by the other victims, claiming that he needs to erase the evening to keep it a secret from his fiancée. Through this, he meets several hackers, but refuses their service when they don't match their suspect. One day, a hacker named Anon contacts Sal. Upon Anon's insistence, they meet at a public place that evening. Before leaving his apartment, he signals Lester discreetly. Finally, Sal meets Anon, whom he recognizes as their suspect. He takes her to his apartment to allow Lester to scan her proxies. While they're in his apartment, Lester tries to find Anon through the metadata but her location is blocked. Still, Lester pinpoints where she is and starts a trace. Anon tells Sal that her policy is only to see what he needs her to hack. However, she warns him that if he betrays her, she can do more. When Sal agrees to the terms, Anon views the evening and proceeds to delete it, even from the woman's recording. Anon then overrides the recording with another one when Sal was alone in his apartment. After the job is done, Anon proceeds to delete their meeting. To give Lester more time to trace her, Sal starts making small talk. He asks why she doesn't use an alias for her profile, and Anon answers that she doesn't want to exist on anyone's recording. When she's about to leave, Sal casually asks her what she does with people's memories, which she cannot delete. In response, Anon aims a gun at him. She demands that he looks away while she exits his apartment. As soon as she does, Sal grabs his gun to chase after her, but she's gone. Lester was still unable to find her record. After getting back to his normal life, Charles wonders what Anon would do if she looked into Sal again. Sal believes that Anon wouldn't, since it's her policy to only look at what she needs to alter. He's then introduced to their new tech specialist, Cyrus Freer. Cyrus is able to hack into Anon's current point of view to find any clue on her proxies, but they can't look back to her recordings. They watch her in her apartment, developing a profile based on her possessions. They then watch her load a gun that matches their suspect's weapon and prepare herself to sleep. Then, they watch Anon log into the database to erase a recording of an art dealer, Jesper Nix, buying paintings from a forger. During this, Cyrus traces 12 proxies that Anon used, with the last one being anonymous. The next day, Sal meets up with the team, but they still haven't found her location. They continue watching Anon go through her day, but they get disconnected when she looks out of the window. Cyrus and Lester deduce that she just disconnected to start using a new chain of proxies. Later, they find out that Nyx is dead. They watch Nyx's final moments seeing that it's the same M.O. Due to the continuous crimes, Bureau Commissioner Joseph Kennick stresses to the team that homicides are less important than the level of alteration Anon's been doing, which makes all crimes possible. With the Bureau, and by extension, the society relying on transparency, Anon's ability compromises their system. Kenick insists that they focus on catching Anon to stop her activities, regardless of how many victims she leaves behind. Charles orders Sal to go back undercover to catch Anon. Sal is nervous, hoping not to arouse suspicion from Anon. So, he asks Cyrus and Lester to patch his recent memories, as good as she did. Days later, Sal contacts Anon to allow Lester to trace her new proxy. Anon edits a recording of Sal purchasing recreational substances, though she questions if he only did it to meet with her again. After the job, Anon joins him in using the substance that he just purchased. Sal asks her if she does her job other than paying the bills. Anon claims to have no hidden agenda, but admits that she believes that the system is wrong. Sal argues that it's for their safety, but Anon claims that she doesn't feel safe. He asks how long she's been anonymous, and she hesitates before confessing that she'd been doing this since she was 18. Suddenly, Anon names a gun at him, questioning if he really does have a fiancé when he acts like a bachelor. Sal pushes her gun away, and she leans for a kiss. The two then spend the evening in bed together. After the passionate encounter, Anon looks further into Sal's recordings and spots a glitch. The glitch allows her to uncover Sal's true identity. Sal hears her leaving and finds Lester dead in the next apartment. Anon then calls him, revealing what she knew. She warns him not to search for her. Sal is in shock over what happened when the rest arrive. Charles advises him to take a few days off to recollect himself. 
Sal looks back on his memories with his son again before returning home. When he pours himself a glass of liquor, he receives a message from Anon, taunting him that she can now see everything through his eyes. Sal threatens to stop her, and in retaliation, Anon sends him several illusions of getting attacked. Then, he sees himself back in his apartment, but sees that it's full of rats. Next, he sees a recording of himself, apologizing to his ex-wife for not watching their son. His vision switches to his son's last moment, when he walked into his street to chase a balloon. Sal quietly watches his own memory of finding his son's dead body. In the morning, Anon starts deleting Sal's recordings of his son from his mind. He then calls Kristen and asks her to send him any recordings of their son, since all of his are gone. Kristen freezes upon realizing that her recordings of him are also gone. He walks out of his apartment and finds the hallway on fire. Paranoid, Sal pulls out his gun until his neighbor, Thomas, catches his attention. Sal then walks to the elevator nearly steps inside before realizing that the lift isn't there. Sal drives to the station but his altered vision has him going straight into oncoming traffic. When Charles finds him, Sal tells him that Anon had been altering his eyes and forcing him to watch his son's death repeatedly. He no longer trusts what he sees. Charles assures him that his team has hired more hackers to find her. Suddenly, another detective approaches and arrests Sal for murdering Thomas. In the interrogation room, Sal insists that he didn't shoot Thomas. The detectives argue that one of his bullets was found on the wall near the body. But Sal points out that his 9mm couldn't have made the large bullet hole that they see on Thomas's body. He insists that Anon is setting him up, but this doesn't convince anyone. Sal is put under house arrest and is removed from the case. He leaves his gun to them and quietly goes home. While under house arrest, Sal is constantly watched by the team. He casually stares at a wall while putting a gun on his belt from behind to avoid their eyes. Sal pretends to have fallen asleep before getting up and feeling his way out of the building with his eyes closed. He knocks out the officer watching him before heading to Anon's loft. Sal reaches Anon's loft and searches for the woman. Anon commends him for finding her, but warns him that she can still see what he sees. He demands an explanation of her actions, but Anon defends that she's being framed as well. To prove her innocence, she sends him the record of when she left his fake apartment, showing that Lester was already dead when she left. Soon, the police arrive, and Anon escapes. Sal tells Charles that Anon could be innocent, but Charles thinks that it's a trick. Sal is relieved from duty and is put under surveillance. Outside his apartment, Anon sees his condition. She hacks into his recording and loops a clip of him in his apartment for the detectives watching him. Then, she creates a fake emergency report, sending the officers watching his building away. Anon then walks to Sal's building. Sal prepares his gun, but his vision suddenly gets hacked. He sees another person's point of view, who is holding a gun to him. Sal blindly attacks the person person, shooting them in the leg. Sal gets hit as well, but continues to watch his assailant's point of view. He sees that Anon is behind the shooter, and when he pins her to the wall, the mirror behind her reveals that the shooter is Cyrus. Cyrus then hacks into Anon's vision to make her see what he sees. He reveals that he's the anonymous proxy that she's been using to hide her identity. When the Bureau contacted him, Cyrus made sure to lead the investigation away from her. He did this because he admires her work and wishes to help her stay hidden. Cyrus promises to erase the memories that she cannot delete, then aims his gun at Sal. Anon swats his gun away, then promises that she can help him hack their way to disappear completely. But Cyrus is not convinced. Cyrus aims his gun at Sal again, but Sal manages to shoot him in the stomach without looking. Cyrus grabs Anon and drags her away, but Sal catches up to them despite seeing through Cyrus' eyes. He shoots Cyrus again, finally ending his life. Sal is freed from the hacking and watches Anon walk away. Kenick berates Charles for hiring Cyrus, but Charles defends that the Bureau recommended him. Kenick scoffs, realizing that Cyrus made it look like they recommended him. When he demands Sal to search for Anon, Sal simply walks away. At the spot where they first met, Anon approaches Sal and apologizes for using him as bait to lure Cyrus out. Anon realized that Cyrus killed her clients because he didn't want anyone else to have her. She then reveals that she divided her life's record into seconds and added it randomly to other people's recordings, making herself hidden. Sal then asks her why she put so much effort into hiding, so Anon explains that she simply doesn't want to be seen. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.